So this is something that I have avoided for some time, a crypto stamp, a really new concept in the world of philately that I have avoided partly because I just didn't understand it or anything in the world of crypto collectibles, cryptocurrencies, NFTs, blockchain technology, tokens, and all the other buzzwords and jargon that go along with it. Also, I struggle to see how crypto stamps and NFTs are connected to the world of stamps and philately that I love. But NFTs and the crypto space are extremely popular right now. NFTs, or non-fungible tokens, they're taking over the art world. I'm curious about this. One of the hot financial trends on the internet is something called NFTs. NFTs. Non-fungible tokens, or NFTs, are exploding in popularity. Now, stamp collecting, or philately, is entering into the space in various forms. This is one of those forms. A stamp issued by a legit postal service that has a digital twin powered by the Ethereum blockchain, which might not make sense right now, but hopefully will in a few minutes, because although I've been avoiding crypto stamps for some time, Austria Post have forced me to learn about it. They've played a move that I cannot ignore. They issued this crypto stamp 3.1 with imagery of a rhino. Among my collection of stamps, I have a few, very few topical collections. Stamps that I collect centered around a topic where I try to get almost every stamp ever issued that features this topic. Rhino stamps are my favorite topic to collect, and many of my viewers have contributed to this collection with rhino stamps, covers, postcards, and more. So thanks to this crazy coincidence, Austria have forced me to look into the world of crypto for the sake of my own collection. Well played, Austria. Well played. So what are they? And do NFTs and crypto stamps belong in the hobby? Should we even care? Let's explore that and more on this episode of Hashtag Flatly. Being that this audience is primarily stamp collectors, philatelists, postal historians, and so on, I already know that most of you are uninterested in this concept because I ran a poll on Twitter and YouTube asking about the concept of NFTs, and the majority of participants were against the idea that it is a part of philately. While several of you were like me and didn't know enough about NFTs to make a decision. Even so, if you've made up your mind already, I encourage you to keep watching because stamp collecting is getting involved in an interesting new technology and a craze that is pushing the boundaries of the collecting space. And whether or not you consider this to be a part of our hobby, it is really fascinating. And this gives us an opportunity to learn about it. The concept of digital collectibles is a very recent trend. And while online gaming with collecting badges and accessories has been around for some time, the concept of actually owning a digital collectible asset is what the hype is all about at the moment. This includes videos, memes, GIFs, music, and the list goes on. These are all popular items to collect. And by collect, you actually have ownership of the digital collectible asset. Just as if I purchased a physical stamp and placed it in my stamp album, purchasing a digital collectible is very similar in that you're actually considered to be the owner of a very specific item. You may have already seen on the news ridiculous amounts of money being spent to purchase NBA highlights or pixelated crypto punks and crypto kitties, cat gifts, even Twitter founders Jack Dorsey sold his very first tweet for a whopping $2.9 million. So what is enabling this trend, this sudden excitement to collect digital things? Well, it's all part of a new technology that is expected to change a lot of how we do things today. The blockchain. A blockchain is a system utilizing a vast network of computers that keep track of transactions in a decentralized ledger. This means that there is no one place where information is stored, rather it is stored in numerous places throughout the network. And all of these blocks of information can quickly be linked together to learn about the transactional history of an item and validate its authenticity. Cryptocurrencies are exploding at the moment due to the blockchain infrastructure. A system where no bank is required offers some benefits that speculators and investors are looking to capitalize on. And collectors are enjoying this technology for similar reasons, one of which is provenance, being able to trace and validate past ownership of an item, who had it and how much they spent on it, which is very difficult to do in the real world, authenticate that something is real by tracing back its past ownership right to the very beginning. 
but it's something that art enthusiasts and philatelists take very seriously. While this technology provides provenance with ease, it's all there in a decentralized ledger. Which brings us to the second thing, is that it is said to be very difficult, if not impossible, to manipulate records in the blockchain or even delete them. Several encrypted nodes within the network have to validate the transaction. You are getting the information from several secure sources. All of these records are permanently stored on the blockchain. Now there are a number of other capabilities being explored that may interest the collecting community as well. One of which would be the ability to provide royalties to the artist each time their artwork is sold. So the original artist gets to benefit from continued selling of their artwork, especially if it appreciates over time. But the big hype that is driving a lot of people to collect these items, these digital assets, is the belief that they're going to be rich one day, that their collection is going to be worth a lot of money. And we'll get to that in a bit. Blockchain technology is promising efficiency and transparency, and all sorts of industries are rushing to the blockchain space, finding the opportunity to rethink processes and potentially solve problems that they have today. From legal contracts to medical data, media licensing, real estate investment, and more, not to mention how it is already disrupting the banking world. So it's actually no surprise that collectors of things got excited about this and is pushing the boundaries of blockchain capabilities. Not everything about this technology is perceived to be great, however, there are some negatives being called out, including the amount of power that is required to run all these blockchain systems. An issue for climate change, of course, as well as the lack of regulation that could cause a bit of a risky environment for a number of reasons. Now, a term that you've already heard in this video and you'll continue to hear is NFT, non-fungible token. Videos, GIFs, memes, digital art, and a simple tweet have all been sold as an NFT on a blockchain. But what exactly does that mean? Well, NF, non-fungible, means that it is irreplaceable. It is simply unique. It cannot be swapped out or traded for something identical. A dollar bill, however, is a fungible item. It doesn't matter if I have this one, or this one, or even four quarters. It gets me what I want. It is totally fungible. Bitcoin and any cryptocurrency is the same. It doesn't matter which particular Bitcoin or fraction of a Bitcoin you have and so on. However, non-fungible means that it does matter which one you have. It's unique. Whether it's the only one or part of a limited number of items in which there is a quality that differentiates it from others, it matters which one you have. Now, let's go to stamps for an example, because postage stamps in real life live in this dual world of the fungible and the non-fungible, and that largely depends on what you intend to use them for. If you are sending mail, postage stamps are totally fungible. I could use this forever stamp with a flag or this one with Batman. Both will send a letter anywhere in the US. In fact, I can completely swap the forever stamp with these stamps that add up to 58 cents. It doesn't matter which ones I use as long as I meet the current postage rate. However, if the stamp is perceived to be a collectible item, then it is non-fungible. Everything about the stamp that makes it unique becomes important, from its condition, its centering, its perforation, its color. Even the fact that you own it makes it a unique and non-fungible entity. Okay, that's the NF. And T, token, simply put, is a representation for something. Have I mentioned that NFTs are a really big deal at the moment? Visa purchased a CryptoPunk NFT for $150,000, sparking a burst of transactions in the digital artwork that totaled more than $20 million in sales. In music, the Kings of Leon releasing an NFT only album. NFT sales hitting $340 million. That's up from $12 million in December. The art world just turned upside down with the sale of this digital collage. NFT uh, auctioned off by Christie's yesterday went for a record shattering $69 million. Nearly $70 million. $69.3 million. Interesting to note that owning an NFT doesn't give you sole rights for using the item. People can still copy and display the item. It's on on the internet. For example, I didn't spend a cent on this cat gif that sold for over $500,000, but here I am showing it to you. Also, you do not own the copyright. Just like stamps, I can own one, but not own the artist's image. Just my own stamp with the image. NFTs are the same, you don't own the artist's image. To a degree, purchasing an NFT is like purchasing the bragging rights to saying that you own something. You seldom get a physical item or even a file of the digital asset. 
It's a blockchain that recognizes you as the owner of these bragging rights, someone who can later sell them to someone else. That's it. It's just a record within a ledger, which is very different from how I always thought of collecting. Now, if you find yourself confused right now, that is more than okay because this is confusing. I'm still confused, but it shouldn't stop us from exploring how stamps are becoming NFTs. So let's take a look at that. We are seeing stamps take on different forms in the crypto collectible or NFT space. In this case, the Austrian Postal Service has issued a physical stamp with a digital twin. They began doing this in 2019 powered by the Ethereum blockchain and has been so popular that each time they've issued crypto stamps, they have sold out completely. Other postal services such as Croatia and Switzerland have issued a similar concept. So this is Austria's 3.1 crypto stamp, one of two that were issued. This one is a rhino using the Ethereum blockchain symbol as its horns. The other stamp that was issued is a cat. You can see that it comes with a physical stamp that you can peel and stick on a letter that is valid for postage. And then there is a QR code that links to the digital twin online. Also with this particular 3.1 issue, you can use your smartphone and place it near the stamp using built-in near frequency communication to allow your smartphone to instantly recognize the stamp online. Now, the first time that the digital twin is viewed online, it goes through a bit of a revealing ceremony. And that is because although Austria Post issued one type of physical stamp for the Rhino, there are five different types of digital stamps out there, each a different color corresponding to a different scarcity. The most common is black, then green, blue, yellow, and the rarest is red. You won't know what you got until you scan the stamp and find out through the big reveal. In this case, mine is black, the most common of the stamps, and I can store it in Austria Post website under the collection tab. Note that the reveal and the switch of ownership from Austria Post to me is stored in the blockchain. So you can quickly see this history captured here. And should I sell this in the future, those transactions will be captured in the blockchain as well. Now this digital stamp is nothing more than a collecting item. It doesn't change as the physical item gets used or gets postmarked, and it doesn't track the journey of the package or letter through the postal system, which would be cool. It is merely a gimmick associated with a physical stamp, and the hope is that you will eagerly purchase more to try and get each of the colors, a full collection, or go into the secondary market to purchase the revealed color stamps from other collectors. Of course, the scarcer the color, the higher the price. Now this black rhino stamp is not the only NFT that I've purchased. The United States has also ventured into the NFT space, but with something very different. Using the VV platform, an app that is quickly becoming the go-to platform for big name brands to sell collectible NFT images, such as Disney, Star Trek, DC Comics, and more, the USPS has joined the big brands and issued four different stamps, merely images of the 2021 Day of the Dead stamps. Now, there is no physical and digital twinning here. You don't activate or view the stamp through a physical stamp that you've purchased from the postal service. You just need the VV app, along with purchasing gems, which is the currency that the app uses. The crazy thing is, when these images, these Day of the Dead stamps, went up for sale, Every single one was sold in less than one full second. A full second, I'm serious. Both myself as well as the digital flatlist, James Gavin, clicked on that very second to try purchase a stamp and both of us failed. They were initially sold for the equivalent of $6 each. And now, as of this video, the most common one is going for 10 times that price on the secondary market. The rarest of the stamps is going for over $500. Now, I will admit that this app is kind of fun. Forget the fact that I had to cough up $60 to get an image of a stamp. I did that for research purposes. But the app allows me to view this image in my own studio. It's an augmented reality. And um, you can see that it's actually quite a large stamp in my studio. Uh, you can even go around it. Or you could view it in your virtual vault where you keep all of your NFT collectibles from the VV app. And you can do that just by walking around in it or again, have some augmented reality and physically walk into it. Of 
course I don't have any other digital items I just have this one stamp which I've placed in the left corner here but if I did have other NFTs I can place them all around this display area now collectors in the space do get excited about these types of licensed items. It shows a lot that big brands are issuing these NFT collectibles such as Disney, Marvel and now the United States Postal Service. Now what differentiates my NFT from the others is the issue number. It seems that the lower the number the better the collectible. But do I get as much joy owning this NFT as I do owning the full sheet of Day of the Dead stamps from the United States Postal Service? Not necessarily. While I can place my Rhino physical stamp alongside my physical Day of the Dead stamps, I cannot do that digitally, at least right now. My USPS NFT sits in my vault, I guess, on the VV app, while the Rhino stamp sits on the Austria Post website. I can't necessarily put them together in the same digital album. Now the USPS NFT and the Austria Post crypto stamps, all the other crypto stamps out there, are just two examples of how stamp could live in this NFT space. Another way is that it could be not backed by any postal service. Anyone can create an image, scan a stamp, give it cool animation properties and call it an NFT and sell it. And you may see many different entities just doing this, whether the stamp is a portrayal of a real postage stamp or completely fictitious. They are out there already. It's art in the form of a stamp. And a rarity will be assigned to these NFT stamps by the creator to make it a bit of a challenge for you to try and collect them all. But the artists and the entities that are putting these NFTs together and selling them could be anything from a postal service as we saw to a private company to just me sitting in my pajamas drawing on a desktop application and calling them rare because I say so. Not rare, ultra rare. <laughs> so the big question, is this philately? I'm not going to be the one to say it is or it is not. I think it could be argued either way. I believe that Philately does encompass the non-postage stamp, the, the revenues, the Cinderella's that include bogus and fantasy stamps. So this could be another branch of Philately. Where I see real tie-ins come into the appreciation of the art. So if there are real postage stamps that somebody is collecting or looking at online, it's a highly rendered image of something that really exists in the physical space, then I think that is uh, definitely an argument for philately. But even the made-up stamps, uh, you could argue the world of fantasy philately does have a connection to the hobby. The other key thing to remember is that you don't need to collect stamps to be a philatelist. You could study stamps and never own a single one, but consider yourself to be a philatelist. And I can also see how this NFT space can appeal to the collector psyche. Not necessarily a philatelist or stamp collector, but really any collector. The desire to hunt things down and complete a collection. So if you like this idea, totally go for it. Enjoy it. There may be a lot of fun here. Personally, and this is my opinion, so disclaimer, I don't see myself enjoying collecting digital items, tokens, NFTs, not nearly as close as to what I've been able to enjoy with flatly stamp collecting, collecting the physical postage stamp. For anyone watching that came here because you're an NFT enthusiast and not a stamp collector, my audience will be very quick to tell you that flatly goes beyond collecting five different colors with a serial number. Stamps have been a mechanism that has changed the world through communication. They have been on letters and packages that have crossed front lines. They've spread propaganda, expressed love, united people. They have birthed new countries. They have traveled to the moon and they've supported revolutions in industry, travel, sport, and politics. Stamps are the physical items that have been collected for over 180 years. Many stamp enthusiasts collect because it is an escape from the digital, because it is a connection to the past. Stamps have provided new insights and different perspectives of the historical narratives out there. A true stamp collector, a philatelist, a postal historian that collects covers and postcards, revealing tales of messages being sent between here and there, 
isn't obsessed with monetary value. They are obsessed with learning, obsessed with exploring accessible historical artifacts that tell us about a place and time. There are very few hobbies that can do this with the scale and enjoyment that stamp collecting offers. Sorry, that was a bit too sappy, but what I was trying to say is that maybe Philately will find a place in this NFT space. Just realize that philately and stamp collecting and postal history go well beyond the ink that is on the paper. And it certainly will go well beyond any pixels on a smartphone. The collecting element of philately is just one component of the hobby. The connection to a postage stamp, what it has done and what it continues to do, is a major component that I just don't see in this NFT space right now. Also realize that the market that is currently buying these NFTs issued by the United States Postal Service or Austria Post are largely not real stamp collectors or people that are interested in the hobby of philately and stamp collecting. They're in it for the NFT craze, the hype, and realize that there is a lot of hype around this at the moment. One of my favorite philatelists, Gary Lowe, a well-known voice in the online philatelic community, jokingly tweeted that NFT could rather stand for non-flowering tulip, which is a funny comparison to the tulip mania from the 1600s. It was one of the first speculative bubbles that was ever recorded in human history. People went crazy over purchasing Dutch tulips as speculators drove prices up. Everyone wanted a slice of the action. There was such a fear of missing out on this craze that people were buying tulips without actually even seeing them. This bubble then popped just a few months later Prices crashed and many, many people lost fortunes. We have tended to do this a lot in the past. Get obsessed about something new, rush into it, and create a bubble. Perhaps this will happen to the NFT space. The fad may come to an end very soon. Or maybe it won't. My economics professor always used to say that you can only confirm that it's a bubble if it actually pops. Okay, so are there any ways that philately can have a much stronger connection to this world of blockchain and NFTs in the future? Perhaps there are. Actually owning a piece of a physical stamp in real life might be one of those ways. We are seeing this being pioneered by Stanley Gibbons, in which they have democratized the one cent magenta, and people can actually purchase shares of the stamp. It's a real stamp, a famous real stamp, and perhaps future democratizations of covers and stamps could become non-fungible tokens on a blockchain. Why not? But perhaps there are more interesting connections that we can make, especially from a postal history standpoint. What about owning digital communications that we haven't been able to connect to the physical world yet, such as emails? Or more physically, what about the transportation of mail, real mail, using digital tokens? For example, Iceland now sends stamps via text message. If you would like a stamp, you can send a text message and receive a number that you then write on the postal item. If this number was a digital token that captured the journey of a letter in a blockchain, then it could be something that a flatless may find interesting. I know it might be a bit of a stretch, but think about it. Letters today don't even have to bother with stamps. They could simply be a barcode, a code that could gather data along its journey from sender to recipient. This code could be a digital asset worth owning, studying, and collecting. All of this is possible, and I say this because the USPS recently certified a company to start leveraging blockchain technology to generate e-postage labels that will ultimately become the world's first blockchain stamps that is actually used for mail in the physical world. Now that has piqued my philatelic curiosity. Who knows where that can go or what else can be done in this space? As for now, my Rhino and Day of the Dead NFTs are just out there. Something that I'll keep an eye on as the technology continues to mature. And it needs to mature for the current community of stamp collectors to buy into it. Now, I consider myself relatively tech savvy. I make these videos and post them onto social media, for example, so that should be worth something. However, I really struggled with this blockchain space. Now, the VV app that the USPS posted its NFT on was fairly straightforward and I was able to figure that out. But the Rhino stamp from Austria had me figuring out crypto wallets, uh, side chains for the main chains such as DAI and XDAI off of Ethereum. I had to use a token bridge. I was trying to move it from one side chain to the main chain and I had to pay transaction fees which are called gas fees and I think they reward miners. I also got numerous 404 error pages throughout this experience. I clearly didn't know what I was doing and I struggled. 
As for now, the physical stamp that could be used as postage is the one that I'm able to put alongside my collection and enjoy today. I've left a number of links in the video description for you to go ahead and learn more. And of course, I'm very eager to hear from you. What are your thoughts on NFTs and crypto stamps? And would you consider purchasing one? Let's have a debate. And of course, be very respectful in the comments as we all share and learn from each other. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button and consider subscribing if you haven't already done so. It's free. As always, thank you for watching and happy exploring.